This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in him. We are happy for you to join us this morning, and I hope it will be a blessing. You're at the right place at the right time. But before we start, I'm going to read a few scriptures to you. It's from 1 John chapter 4, and I'm going to start from verse 10, just a few verses. And it reads, Therein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sins. Beloved, if God loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love perfect in us. Thereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he, gave, he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever have confessed that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And this is the last verse, and it said, And we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Hallelujah. We're going to sing and we're going to praise the Lord in songs and worship. If you feel like shouting, you shout. If you feel like clapping, you clap it. Wherever you are today, in your bed, in your home, in your car, just worship the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll trade it in my sorrow. I'll trade it. 
During this time, we just wanted to let you know we are here for you. We'd be happy to pray for you because we know that God wants to give you and your family good health, to provide for all of your needs, and to give you hope and peace. If you would like someone to pray for you today, you can click on the prayer button just below the video. You can send an email to pray at eigministries.com or call us at 780-473-5336 and our team will pray with you. We want to see God come through for you. Good morning, all you wonderful folks uh, that are online, awake, and wanting to give God glory and give God praise for all that he has done on this wonderful, special day. I also want to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day out there. May you enjoy a day full of mirth, of happiness, of joy, and uh, having your, uh, your, your feet being you know, catered to and having such good family fellowship and good family time that you know how special you are to your family. Happy Father's Day and congratulations on the special role that God has given you. Uh, this morning I, I want to begin by reading from Psalm 103 from verse 1 to 6. I'm reading from the International Standard Version, so please follow in your translations. Bless the Lord, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, and never forget any of his benefits. He continues to forgive all your sins. He continues to heal all your diseases. He continues to redeem your life from the pit and he continuously surrounds you with gracious love and compassion. He keeps satisfying you with good things and he keeps renewing your youth like the eagles. The Lord continuously does what is right, executing justice for all who are being oppressed. Please bow your heads with me out there. Heavenly Father, we do give you praise. We lift up your name and we honor you, God. What a wonderful Father you are to us. And on this special day, God, we want to worship you for who you are. Because there's none more deserving, O oh God. None that such honor and glory is due unto, except God Almighty who lives forevermore. This morning, God, as I stand before your, your people to declare your words, Father in heaven, may your anointing be evident. Father, let your words go forth. Oh God, unhindered and do their work according to your will this morning. And may your name be glorified. May your name be lifted up. Heavenly Father, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. When you speak of your earthly father, there may be several things about him that stand out for you. This may be positive or negative. Becoming a father is really a miracle. I know the science-minded may disagree. Yet the procedures and sequences can be logged and laid out in logical fashion. But just think how precise and continuous the cycle has been for all these years, and you will come to agree. It is a miracle. Designed and set in order by the mighty God, that father the father of us all formed in his own image. Uh, this morning I want to speak to you on a topic that I will bravely attempt to talk about in my father's image. In my father's image. You could interject in there uh, our heavenly father, but it covers all fathers and all fatherly roles. 
In reflecting on his heavenly father, the psalmist penned it like this. Bless the Lord, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, and never forget any of his benefits. The psalmist looking back and reflecting on who his heavenly father was. He did not have negative to say, but he had a positive. He was saying to his soul, honor my God, honor my father, because my father has been good to me. I don't want to forget any of the things that he has done for me. His blessing, his caring, his protection, his shelter, his provision, his love for me. Don't forget all of his benefits. To be able to say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. He had fond memories of the Heavenly Father. How much more for us, when you think of your father, when you think of your Heavenly Father, when, you're, when your children would think of you, how do you believe they would reflect? What are some of the words you think they would say? Would they describe you as in a negative sense or would they place you in a positive sense? You see, positive would say, would show that you have brought benefits to them, that you have been a, a good nurturing, a good example, a good leader in their lives, a good, uh, a, a good secure family structure, being there, playing your role, playing your part, taking on your responsibility in a honorable way, that even when your heavenly father looks down from, from above, he would be pleased and satisfied, you would find favor in his sight, in my father's image. As a matter of fact, when we think of our dads, when we, when we think of them in such positive light, we find ourselves as sons or daughters or, or even grandchildren patterning our lives because we're saying he was a good man. I love the principles that he said. And we fashion our life to follow or to walk in their footsteps. The psalmist, don't forget any of his benefits. As he taught on his heavenly father, he had a lot of good things to say. He continues to forgive all your sins. He continues to heal all your diseases. Oh, hallelujah. He continues to redeem your life from the pit. And he continuously surrounds you with gracious love and compassion. He keeps satisfying you with good things and he keeps renewing your youth like the eagles. What a wonderful commendation from someone who is able to look up, look up to a fatherly figure and describe him in such way. Of course the psalmist is talking about our heavenly father, but I, I want you to see the role that our heavenly father plays, that he truly plays a fatherly role. And he is the ultimate example for all us as earthly fathers to endeavor or to, to try to follow. We got to pattern our lives after him. After all, in Genesis, we are taught that we were created in his own image. He forgive all your sins. If we personalize it, we can say, our Heavenly Father forgive all our sins. He continues to heal all our diseases. He continues to redeem our lives from the pit. Now when we think of our, our earthly roles as earthly fathers, we can, we can sum this up as, as a, a home that a child can grow up feeling very secure and very loved in. Not, not worrying about going hungry, not feeling lonely, not feeling neglected. When, when, they, when they make a mistake, it is not, it's not a stamp that there will be a failure in life. 
forgiving. We can correct, but forgive. Just as our Heavenly Father has forgiven, He seems to redeem, He continues to redeem our lives from the pit. When they fall, we want to be there to pick them up, whether physically, whether financially, whether mentally, emotionally, that's what we are there for as their cornerstone. We would like them not to stay in the dust, but to be able to, to lift them up in spirit, in body, uh, help them where we possibly can. Surrounds you, surrounds us with gracious love and compassion. Uh, I've heard many such stories about fathers who have not uh, shown love towards their children. Some of some don't even play their role anymore. It's left up to the other party to take their part. But let me tell you something. You are the one that was designed as the father. You need to step up and pay attention to your role and let you cannot have someone else try to fill it. You will be doing a great disservice to your children when you are missing in the position you are supposed to be. And don't get me wrong. We oftentimes don't get it right. But we must be pressing towards being the example. Just like our Heavenly Father has been to us. We are created to be like Him. To show love. To show compassion. We can't be so rigid that we cannot bend. We can't be so stern that we cannot show love. He keeps satisfying you with good things and he keeps renewing your youth like the eagles. Love, my brothers and sisters, have a nurturing effect that goes long ways farther than money, farther than any wealth, any material things. It builds emotionally such that when hard times and tough times difficult situation presents itself they don't have to uh, lower their head but they can look up and say there's a better day coming they have a stronger resolve to deal with life's circumstances oh my our heavenly father was described by the psalmist the shepherd king just like that and even for you and I who have come to know him as our true and living father in heaven, we can agree with the psalmist that he continually renews our life in him. And I like this line that he put. He says, you're you like the eagles. In other words, my brothers and sisters, he's talking about you are able to soar. You can soar high. You see, fathers, you gotta you let, allow your children, you gotta tell them, you gotta feed in them that they can be whoever they want to be. Don't tell them not to aim for the lowest, but to aim for the highest. Lift up their head because we, we have no idea who they will turn out to be. That they will not go through life learning to settle for mediocrity, but reaching pressing towards that mark as Paul said, reaching for higher heights and deeper depths. And of course I'm not talking about egotism or pride or boastfulness. What I'm talking about to be able to come to be grow up into the into the human or the or the, 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 the human that God has called you or fashioned you or designed you to be your full potential so you can be of service. To him, I will tell you who the Heavenly Father is not. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 21, it says, Fathers, do not make your children resentful, otherwise they'll become discouraged. You see, fathers out there, remember, you being a father is a miracle. You can take it from me as I tell you. When you think about it, it seems very supernatural, the, the, the way things happen. We can all look at the, the system of it, but I tell you that the force behind it is way greater than any human, anything in this world. He is God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. 
And Paul to the Colossian fathers, do not make your children resentful. How can you make your children resentful? Don't antagonize them. The King James Version puts it this way, don't provoke them. But admonish them. In other words, you don't have to keep pushing their buttons all the time. You don't have to make them hungry. It is not a competition. You are the nurturing figure. Oh, hallelujah. So fathers, I'm encouraging you. It's better to see a smile on your children's face. Your children's faces than the anger, the twisted agony of your, your neckling and your needling and your digging and your provocation. But the scripture calls us not to provoke, but to build them up such that they be not discouraged. I've often heard stories of uh, people who have worked with, been to school with, and when they describe the relationship they had with their father, they talk about how discouraged they are. I will never be anything more than this because my father was this, because my father did this. Therefore, I will never amount to anything more than this. Discouraged. But don't you want your children to be better than who you are? What you have accomplished in life, I believe it is a joy to see them soar way more, higher, way beyond that you ever achieved. The, 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 the pride and the satisfaction to see them succeed in life so much. That even in your silver years, you'll be able to look at them and feel a certain joy within you because they have turned out so well. God is not a provoker of his children. God is not a discourager of his children. God, our heavenly father, will not discourage us. He will not push us down. And a matter of fact, whatever he will do, he will try to get us up out of that pit, to lift up our heads, to rise up from the ashes, to reach out and touch the Lord, such that he can deliver, such that he can lead, such that he can bring to us the joy of his salvation. Our God is not a provoker. So, fathers out there, if we are created in the image of God, if we are an image or, a, or a, an emanation of our Heavenly Father, we should, we should be encouragers and not discouragers. In Psalm 103 and verse 8, I, I will tell you who he is. The psalmist went on to say, the Lord is compassionate, hallelujah, and gracious. He's patient and abundantly rich in gracious love. This is who our God is, compassionate. Some of us, we don't know what compassion is. We believe that if you, the way you have made your bed, that's the exact way you should lie in it. Just think if our heavenly father thought of us that way, none of us would be here today. But compassion is known as a compassionate father, is gracious. We can say gentle, patient. Oh my God, he's so patient with us. Some of us as, 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 as dads, our patience is really too small. We get so upset so easily and for such a long time. And our memories seem to be very long when it comes into the wrongs that our children has done. Oh yeah, you, 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 you acted up yesterday. I haven't forgotten. This is like the next day when you're still holding it. You see, our Heavenly Father is not like that. Sure, He corrects us. Sure, He will reprimand us. But let's not forget how much love He has shown us, how patient He is with us, and abundantly rich in gracious love. Fathers, love your children just as God loves you. 
just as how your father before you loves you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We look at another line, who God is not. He does not maintain a, a dispute continuously or remain angry for all time. Oh God, help us, Jesus. Some of us, our anger has no, no end. We seem to feed off it. What is so wrong? What is so upsetting that your anger will have to last so long? After all, even us as fathers, we still make mistakes. We still get it wrong. So it is not, it is, it is not a real situation to expect them to be perfect every single time. So we must, we must continue to be compassionate. God is not going to remain angry for all time. In verse 10 of Psalm 103, He neither deals with us according to our sins, nor repays us equivalent to our iniquity. You see, a fatherly role, it cannot be like two individuals going at war. No, you are in a position of authority. So when you, you stand in that, exercising your compassion, your patience, your forgiveness, your understanding, you must know that even though they have slipped, they have fallen, they have made a mistake, you got to, you got to point it out to them. I agree, you have got to correct them, but you cannot have it held against them for ever and ever. That's not the fatherly role that God has called us to play. And after all, as godly fathers, we must have forgiveness in our repertoire. I hope I pronounced that word right. He neither deals with us according to our sins, nor repays us equivalent to our iniquity. You see, children are children. Adults are adults. Fathers are fathers. Play your role right. Don't become a child in the situation, but maintain the, the responsibility that God has placed on you. In Colossians 3 and verse 23, Paul puts it like this. Whatever you do, Work at it wholeheartedly, as though you were doing it for the Lord and not merely for people. You see, fathers, we who are fashioned in the image of the Heavenly Father, we have a huge responsibility. You see, many times, the, the, the type of person that your child turns out to be has to do with the way you have treated them when they were younger. Train up a child, Proverbs says, in the way she should grow. And when he or she grows old, he or she will not depart from him. It is our duty to provide the direction and the guidance. And when we do it, don't murmur, don't grumble, don't complain. Don't treat it like it's, 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 it's a hard task. Remember, you, you are practically chosen for this wonderful, wonderful role. God has placed in your charge one of his precious ones. Why aren't you treating that child as such? You see, when we see it in the throne, they will never be be parental abuse of their children. You would not mis, mis, misuse or mistreat your child in any way because you understand how important it is that you are, you are shaping and forming a man or a woman for tomorrow. You see, we see all kind of turmoil going on in the world right now. I can tell you that in, in not all of them, 
But in some of those lives, there has been a misjoin, a mistreatment, an abuse or of some sort that has taken place and that has latched onto them throughout their lives. And for some reason, they might not be able to shake it because every time they look back, they can remember the relationship they had with their father. Fathers, take your role seriously. Stand firm in your place. You are not the mother, you are the father. You are not the child, you are the father. You are not the friend, you are the father. It's, it's, it's an offspring from your own body. It's a part of you. After all, why wouldn't you love the one that comes from you? Why wouldn't you love just as the Heavenly Father loves you? And you see, when you do it with your whole heart, you see, when you, when, when you do it grudgingly, of course, it's going to be hard. It's going to feel like you're, you've gone to the dentist. But think of the joyous moment, even when they took their first steps, when they utter their first words, when they show their first two. That was just the beginning, the joy that it brought. I hope it brought your joy. I hope you were able to experience something like this. Because you see on this day, it's a day to honor Fathers, it's a day to show how important they are to this society. So don't be missing in your role. Don't be missing in your place, emotionally and physically. Embrace it. It's a huge responsibility, but it is a wonderful responsibility to have. And do it as though you were doing it for the Lord and not merely for people. Happy Father's Day. It's a wonderful, wonderful day. And that out there, just because you made a mistake, doesn't mean you cannot go forward doing better. Learn from yesterday's mistake to be better today in your role, in your responsibility. Grow and learn. After all, even though they show so many textbooks on this, every child is different. I hope they're different. We, we don't have cookie cutter children in this world. Even if they look alike, there's something that will set them apart and makes them uniquely who they are. And so it's going to take special kind of handling and treatment. But if the love is there, if the foundation of compassion is there, if the foundation of graciousness is there, if the foundation of godliness in you is there, of course you can accomplish it as God has designed it to be. And you see, when we play our roles right, when we do our duties right, we bring honor and glory to Almighty God. We, we end up uh, making a contribution to the human race and society of people who are ready to take their rightful place socially and skillfully in this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In concluding, fathers, if you don't feed yourself, you cannot take care of others. You won't be strong enough physically and spiritually. I challenge you this day that when you look back at yesterday, who you were yesterday, I challenge you that today you look forward to be a better father than you were yesterday. If you were a great father yesterday, today endeavor to be a greater father than you were yesterday. Progress is always good. Growth is always good. And this world, let me tell you something, this world is always changing around us. In the time of my dad, 
the world then and the world now. It seems like it's so fast. I am playing catch up all the time. But by the grace of God, I will play my role. I will represent what God had designed to the best of my ability. After all, I was created in the image of God to emanate the Heavenly Father, to show the love of God to my children as God has designed it to be. So fathers, happy Father's Day today. May the Lord bless you and guide you. May you abide in his graces. May you enjoy the life of fatherhood. May you enjoy the blessings that it brings. And may you set a wonderful, good example for your children. Be there for them. Be there for them. Be there for them. Sometimes they don't make sense what they say to you. But always let them know how much you love and care for them. Please pray. bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy, oh God, for your loving kindness. I thank you, Father, for, oh God, the fathers you have designed in society. God, you could have set it up other ways, but God, in your wisdom, this is how you have made it. And so, God, I pray for every father, oh God, who is in the reach of my voice this morning. I pray, God, that your hand will be upon them. I pray, God that you grant them courage. I pray, Father, you grant them wisdom, that you lead them in the righteous path. A Father, that there will be that figure, oh God, that, that, that role model, oh Father in heaven, that their children can look up to and follow, that they will build their lives on sound principles of the gospel of Christ, that your Holy Spirit, God, will guide them into nurturing these young lives, oh God, into beautiful men and women. Father in heaven, we pray today, oh God, that, oh God, that your Holy Spirit, Lord, will lead them where you want them to be, God, and you will fashion them according to your will today, God. And those who might be discouraged, oh God, or have given up, Father in heaven, bless them with hope, oh God, bless them with patience and understanding that, God, they will see there is never a hopelessness, but look to you and press onward. Heavenly Father, we pray, have your way today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord, and we bless your name. Happy Father's Day to all of you, and may you live to see many, many more.